the Souls Conquest. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the Souls Conquest, where I am in conversation with Uba Namani, coming all the way from Africa to join us to share about her creative journey with us. I am super, super excited. Uh, we recently connected on LinkedIn, and I had the absolute pleasure of knowing more about her story and what she does. And I know for a fact that you guys will be inspired by what she has to share, not only as a creative, but what she does outside of that as well. We'll touch up on both of these points. I'm super, super excited that you decided to be present here, Ruba, and share your story with us. I'm grateful that you decided to join us today. How are you doing? Hello, Madrima. I'm very happy to be here and um, I'm super excited too. Uh, I remember when I met you on LinkedIn and um, it was it was more like a like very good connection just at the first day and uh, I knew at that particular point that we were going to do more together and I'm really happy that we're doing so much more together and um, I'm happy for all the things that I would say and all the people that would get to hear me and um, for doing this particular podcast session so thank you Thank you so much, Uba. I appreciate that a lot. For those in the audience who have never heard about you or have seen you before, would you like to go ahead and introduce yourself to us? Okay, thank you. So my name is Uba Namani. I am a communication strategist, a content creator, and um, I am a social development agent, and I am based in Nigeria, Africa. And um, the work I do is centered around social development. Like I said, I work for an NGO called Center for Social Awareness, Advocacy and Ethics, CSA. And we work with young people, train them with the necessary skills, competencies and character that they need to become um, good leaders and um, take over the leadership of Africa for good. And um, we'll have a lot of projects, currently ongoing projects like the Society Project, where we work with young people to speak up against police brutality. We have the local government Good Monitor Project, where we work with young people to track government budgets as regards um, health care and the primary education in the local government areas. So these are the things we do. These are the efforts we make um, on our own part to make sure that uh, Africa gets developed eventually and we think to do that we need to change the government and to change that leadership we need to start from the grassroots we need to start from um, the young people because eventually these are the people that will still grow up and become the leaders that we see today so that's why we decided to um, catch them while they're young and start with the young people thank you I love that so much Uwa. I love it so am I right to assume that you are working as a communication strategist at the NGO or is, are these two separate things? Yeah, I'm working as a communication strategist at the NGO. Mm -hmm. I also have a lot of freelance job I do as a content creator, a content marketer. Uh, and, but basically, my, my work portfolio is a communication strategist. Mm -hmm. Awesome. So I have a question for you and you have the opportunity to dive deeper into any of these. I would love to know more about you as a content creator, but also love to learn more about the thing that you're doing in the NGO right now. Uh, so which one would you like to dive deeper into first? Um, the content creator. Mm. Awesome. So tell us a little bit about being a communication strategist and tell us a little bit more about, you know, how you came into this journey and how has content creation helped you in this journey? Okay, so hmm, right from time, I always like um, being creative, thinking of new things, um, taking pictures, making videos. And that, that was how I started as a content creator. So um, in my second year in the university, I just I discovered that I have a love for cameras and I have a love for making videos, second pictures. And uh, so I attended a training organized by the Female Media Network, TFM, and I still work with them too. So uh, I learned photography the first time and uh, I loved it so much. I I got a job um, after after the training because they were supposed to sponsor the best students and I came out best in my class then. So I got a job mm -hmm. with it. <laughs> to work for a studio, uh, one of the top studios around my school area. So I was a photographer at the studio for about a year. 
snapping bed of pictures <laughs> and magic pictures and just those sort of pictures but i always knew at a particular time that there was more to my journey as content creator i knew that i don't want to own a studio where people come and snap their pictures and stuff like that mm. i knew in my heart that i wanted something more but i enjoyed the process of making people beautiful anyway and um, later later on okay covid came actually so i went home um, my parents asked me to come home that i couldn't stay in school while there was nobody there because school we had closed and so i went home and um after going home i couldn't stay at home doing nothing and uh, my boss, we have an headquarter in the Lagos State, one of the biggest cities, the biggest cities actually in Nigeria. And so he called me, I was like, oh, where are you at Are you fine? I said, yes. So he said, okay, um, I need a personal assistant. Can you do, I will tell you what to do, you do for me, a virtual personal assistant. So I was like, sure, anything. I mean, I always had this mindset that I can't do anything. <laughs> so I didn't realize I can't do it, I can't do it. So he said, okay, no worries. So he started giving me jobs and stuff. At first he was giving me more like type this, type that. Then he asked me, okay, can you write? I said, yes, I can write. After all, I used to write essay in secondary school. <laughs> so I said, sure, I can write. And um, uh, he started teaching me content writing. That was how it started. And so let's stream content writing. And before you know it, I was writing for clients. So my boss at that particular time was building this agency, a communication agency, media communications agency. And um, at that point in time, I was just a beginner, but I got the opportunity to work with like very big clients. Um, and it was paying me. The journey was sweet. I was doing a lot of things with a lot of creatives, and even though it was remotely. So I think that particular opportunity was very instrumental in my journey because even though I was young and I just started, I had already um, established a portfolio that might have taken um, people years to build. And uh, I was already working with the organization, I was already working with um, big companies and I could easily add that to my portfolio and um, use it to get um, more jobs. So uh, the opportunity was just um, a grace, like a favor that just came to me by God's grace. And uh, I really appreciate the fact that someone just saw me and gave me that chance when I was CEO, when I was a novice, I did not know anything about content writing. I thought, okay, I write I write essays in school, right? I English, I wrote essays about how I spent my life holiday. So why can't I write? Well, at that point in time, content writing was was a different ball game, but someone was ready to teach me, to coach me, and um, bring me into the media and communication industry. So that was how I started. Well, I kept working for him. So now I still do stuff for, for the agency, Disney Media. I still do stuff for that agency till today because that was where I started. And anytime they call on me, oh, we need to do this, we need to do that. I'm always ready and I'm willing to assist in the project. And um, so I got the offer. So, yeah. So um, later on, after COVID, I went back to school. And um, but I'm in my final year, about to graduate. Uh, but I don't know if you've heard of Castle Strike. There's a strike that lecturers in um, Nigeria usually embark on every time, by the way. So it's it's really slowing down the schooling process. And I'm supposed to graduate. I'm supposed to have graduated April, but now they're on strike and we have to wait till the call of the strike to continue education. So um, I'm still a student, but I got a call from Mm, CSA, that Center for Social Awareness, Advocacy and Ethics, where I now work as a communication strategist and um, <clears throat> to fill up the position because it was vacant. Okay, so how did they find me? How were they able to contact me? So I'm going to tell that story now. So also in my 200 level, I think that was where my old self-development started from when I was in second year in university. First year, I was still playing, <laughs> I was still being like a uh, what's it called pressure but i think in second year i decided that okay i want to develop myself and i started doing stuff so um, when i was in second year i joined this ngo as a trainee so i applied to 
to undergo this training, the same one I'm now doing for other people. So I, I applied and um, I was accepted, went to Abuja, that's capital city for a conference, we met um, top business owners, um, top ethical leaders, and uh, we are inspired and kept on receiving that training for a period of about two years plus. And they were training us on different skills, skills as a leader, skills as a business owner. So, so that was like all the entire makeup of the training. So I graduated from the training and uh, if you complete the training, you will enter the next level, which is a network of effective leaders. So these people are, are more like a community of um, effective leaders, leaders that pass through this training and uh, those leaders are already occupying spaces. We have people already occupying government positions, people already owning top businesses. And uh, me as a media leader, I'm already doing something in my own space. So I was already a member and uh, the organization knew what I was already doing, working for the agency I was working for before. And so they gave me the offer to fill in this position. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Go for it. Gave me the offer to fill in this position and uh, that was how i accepted it because um like i said before even though i was doing photography i was doing those stuff i knew that deep down i wanted something like deeper i wanted something that could make impact i was taking better pictures but i knew that ah uh, if i needed something deeper i was writing i was writing for businesses i was uh, <clears throat> writing content, um, creating video scripts, directing the commercials, writing commercial scripts. Well, I just knew that at the point in time, I just wanted something deeper at that point in my life. So when the offer came, I was like, okay, yeah, this is something deeper. This is something that could actually like make a difference in my Indian community. I could see myself touching one life after the other, helping young people to, to find them. Yeah. Their, their own talent, their, their purpose, giving them to get the skills that I myself have gotten through this program, um, engaging in uh, programs that can actually change society. So that was why I accepted the offer. And it's been a very, very wonderful journey for the past seven months as the communication strategist of CSAE. I've had the opportunities to work with top um, uh, NGOs, non-profits around the world. So uh, an NGO like Oxfam, um, we've been working with them on a project called Sorry Sucking. Mm. Non-profits like um, Open Society of West Africa and some other ones that we've been working with, Paint. So it's been a really great opportunity. So uh, part of my creative journey, so I decided to go on LinkedIn. I've actually been, <sighs> I, need to, I need to be out there because yeah. As a creative, it's one thing to, to be a creative and helping other people build online presence, helping companies build online presence. And, but I don't know, it's just hard to find that time to build your own. Mm. I think creatives, I don't know if you can relate, but this is something I experienced actually. So somebody would be like, ah, oh, well, you are doing this, you're doing that. Well, I went to your social media, there's nothing, there is nothing. So what's up with that? <laughs> it was really a funny situation because yeah, it's not about proving myself to people that I can do this. It's more of, you said this thing works. You said if I did an online thing, this thing works. But why are you not doing it for yourself if this thing truly really works? So it was a challenge to me. And um, in 2022, January, part of my New Year resolution was that I'm going to be an online presence for myself. I don't yeah. know how it's going to happen, but I am going yeah. to be curious and totally dedicated to it. Yeah, it's going to happen. And uh, uh, I tried Instagram at first, but it didn't really resonate with me. There was a lot of, I don't know, but it didn't resonate with me at that particular point in time for what I wanted, actually. So I wanted to build a network. I wanted to connect with people. I wanted to just become the way I am, you know, I'm trying to make it beautiful, trying to paint it, I just wanted to be myself, uh, because I struggled with identity crisis, so uh, I was just done with it, and uh, <laughs> I was like, I just want to be myself, so I tried Instagram, it didn't work, tried it, it didn't work, so they were like, why am I not trying on LinkedIn, mm. and LinkedIn is good, like, I know, I know about the platform and all, 
and um, the summary I want to do, some where I feel good, some where other creative, some where I feel good professional, and some where I can just come to where I am and say what I want to say. And uh, so I now tried it, and it was really good. I think the first breakthrough was um, when the Normally, I do tag LinkedIn for creator. And so LinkedIn for creator kept engaging my post for about four times. I think there was one time they engaged my post three times. And I was like, hmm, this is good. So these people actually see me. And um, then I met a lot of people, people like you, uh, people like Mr. Gerard, people that come to my DM to encourage me and connect with me, like, aside the post and it was really really encouraging and um, uh, it's one thing i appreciate about linkedin the sense of community mm. so it's not just everyone doing their own thing you just be this community people that are rooting for you they're watching out for you they're agreeing or disagreeing it doesn't matter but they're just there to listen and uh, to give you their own feedback mm. so that's the journey so far mm. I loved that journey so much, Uba, and I love how it connected to where you are right now. But I do have a couple of questions for you. The first one being, how important is it for you to make content that makes you happy? And what exactly falls in the content that makes you happy? Like, what is the criteria that says that this is what makes me feel happy? If I'm creating this, this is what makes me feel happy. Okay, so... Um, you're really in content creation, there's room, like I'm not trying. <laughs> the real is that you have to find a balance between what you like or what your brand likes or what your brand resonates with and what your audience wants. And so in that middle, that is where you can find the perfect content, right? Yeah. So if you keep doing just what you think is right and uh, just keep creating just for yourself, mm, I'm forgetting that you have an audience. So, uh, the point you're going to be like, how come nobody engages with me? Am I not saying something relevant? What did I? What am I doing wrong? And when you start budging about metrics, so, uh, to me, to me, I found out that the hack to creating that content that puts you and your audience like is to just be true to yourself and just um, address problems the way they are. The thing is that you're not the only one experiencing that particular problem. There are many people like you experiencing that same thing that you feel, oh, if I say it, uh, people will so frown at it. Uh, it's not be good. Mm, most of my content that I've been engaged the most on LinkedIn are very relatable content. You saw that the ones that I had the second thought about posting, I'm like, hmm, do I really need to say this? Nothing <laughs> good to say, but finally, I said, Okay, let me just make that post. And, and a lot of people just, Ah, yeah, it's just true, very true, very correct. Yeah. Because you're not the only one experiencing that particular situation, you're not the only one having that particular problem. But in a situation where you just want to post maybe the regular, um, just want to be the regular and not be relatable, I think that's where you have problem with content creation the best kind of content are like the relatable one you want someone can see and be like ah i felt this way so when i started how did you deal with it this is how i dealt with my own so mm -hmm. i think that's how i create content that i like just sharing my problems mm -hmm. if there's still if it's still a problem then i ask for solution if it's no longer a problem i share how i was able to deal with it and um, ask people for feedback so yeah. that's just what i do basically that's lovely what would be your uh, you know what would be a few tips that you would like to share with content creators right now who are find, trying to find that sweet spot okay i would say there, when you're starting when you're just beginning your journey as content creator i would say just forget about the metrics for a bit uh, stop focusing on the lies followers and just try to be yourself it's easier when you're yourself it's less of a burden to always post and you'll be having anxiety attack about not showing up but when you just want to be yourself you just genuinely want to share what you have then it's so much easier so that would be my advice just be yourself it can be hard um, because of imposter syndrome and um, all the worries and then the vulnerability that comes with sharing well, I think the hack 
that's just the hack. Just, mm -hmm. just be yourself and say what you want to say the way you want to say. So yeah. most times I just write. I just write the way I talk, the way I would talk to you when you're in front of me, the way I would advise, the way I would share when you are standing right in front of me. That's the way I write, and it's easier for me because now I don't need to start doing a lot of thinking. I don't need to start doing a lot of things for me because I just want to share it the way it is in my mind and mm -hmm. working for me really well. I love that. I want to ask you this. Um, I feel that, you know, when you found out that your content creates impact, that added into your happiness and that became another metric, not likes and follows and comments, but it became another metric that you chose to look at and work towards that your content needs to create some sort of an impact because impact is important to you. Now, this is just an assumption, but am I right in assuming this? about your yes, right. yeah. you are very correct because um in creating content that are relatable i want people to feel the way i'm feeling or i want people to see what i'm saying so i want i want to touch you one way or the other and that's that's one um tip in creating content that people can relate to it's the emotion you are able to touch so people just create like blank content there's no emotion it's just blank like it's, it's a robot that wrote it or it's an artificial intelligent writing but i think humans can see through it unconsciously though people can just see through a content that's not true so uh, okay this is just one of those and that's how it will end but um, touching people is actually about touching emotions like one of them okay? it could sometimes it could be fear it could be happiness it could be joy it could be oh someone gets me so just an emotion that you could just touch could go a long way in making that impact or making that change you want to change you want to change so hmm. I agree with you 100%. It's about the impact and how you do it is by touching emotions, human emotions. How did you find out that impact was the thing that you wanted to kind of focus on as one of the metrics? Like, how did you realize that, ooh, this is what I should be? Like, when was that, you know, um, light bulb moment that made you go, this is something that I need to focus on? What was that moment? Okay. I shared earlier that when I started uh, as a photographer in the studio, I knew then that, okay, this was just not what I'm all about. Mm -hmm. like, so I think that was when I realized that I just wanted to make impact and uh, taking play the pictures was not doing it for me. Yeah. So, so when, I, when I started that entire journey, just done on me so my people will be like do you want to be in the next five years where do you see yourself in the next five years honestly i had no idea then yeah. <laughs> i had no idea i always used to hate such questions please don't ask me take me to lie after asking me anything about five years i never know where i'll be tomorrow after me five years so it was just um the way it was i was confused but i think just deep down i knew that okay this is not it but I think once you just, there's just one thing you just need to get right about your journey. Mm. From there, you just start figuring out the rest. Mm. Like it's, mm. It doesn't all come together at once and it's like, oh, this is what I want to be. It could for some people, but I think creative have that problem. For me, I had a problem, speaking for myself, I had a problem of figuring out what I want to do. And because I, I had a lot of skills, actually. Yeah. I learned a lot of so I could take pictures, make videos, write, do this. Uh, at the point in time, I even did programming. I was coding. <laughs> but I just knew that. Uh, I was just finding that thing, that thing. What's that thing? And I think I found it and I knew that, okay, I want to do all these things. I want to take pictures, but I want to take pictures that tell stories that could actually make impact. I want to make videos that tell stories. I want to write uh, articles that tell stories that help organizations, that help um, non-profits tell stories that can make social impact. Uh, I want to do these things. I want to do these things. All these things I have, all these skills I have, well, I just wanted to be like channeled towards social impact. Mm. That was it for me. 
I love that a lot. Uh, and I can say for sure that your journey is a live example and proof of do things and it will come together. Uh, you know, like just like you said, it is wonderful. I want to know this, right? Let's dive deeper into the NGO part of your work. Can you tell us a little bit about more about what you're doing in the NGO world? outside of being a communication strategist like how is your work impacting the youth of your country and how are you like you know how is your company basically helping the area develop a bit more okay thank you very much so the story or the narrative about africa is usually about underdevelopment corruption bad governance leadership and um, so this is a story that personally i dislike and, uh, personally i want so much of it to change i want some um, kind of africa that i would show up i'm proud of and say oh yeah it was so developed we have these we have that we have just a lot of infrastructure and the leaders are cool the leaders are ethical i want to tell that story too one day and uh, but since that's not the case, um, I don't just want to fold my hands and like, watch it like all crumble. And um, we have several thousands of people who are also thinking the same thing I'm thinking. And one of them, which is the founder of CSA, said, ah, no, we have to make work to do something. So, and he founded the organization Center for Social Awareness, Advocacy, and Ethics. And what we do is to work with young people to give them that skill, character, competencies that they need to become ethical, good and ethical leaders. Okay. Um, the problem with the problem with um, Africa is it's not it's not that Africans are are bad people. In short, I. 100% believe that Africans are really, really good people. The problem is that um, sometimes we don't start from the grassroots to tackle problem problems. And um, if we don't do something about this next generation of leaders that are going to enter into the space, mm. it's just going to crumble this entire system. So most times, um, leaders don't take the time to get trained, to receive the skills, to receive those competencies that they need to just be the good leader they are. Sometimes it's not a matter of being a bad person, it's just you don't have the skill, right? And uh, so we believe that if we can <clears throat> tackle this problem from the roots and help train young people uh, in different um, spheres of life, maybe they want to be political leaders, they could be media leader, they could be um, educational leaders, whatever you want to be, just make sure that you have the right skills that you need to um, occupy a leadership position in Africa and uh, make the necessary changes. And for our organization, we are looking at helping to show people get to the highest level of leadership and not just um, at the grassroots, because we believe that the, the higher you are in the pyramid, the greater the change you will be able to effect. So we don't want, uh, maybe, okay, just look at it this way. So want leaders that can be president, governors, and not the ones that can maybe be head of the local government because the higher you are there, the higher your you know ability to effect changes. And we want people that can be vice chancellor, um, not necessarily the ones that will be teachers, because yeah, like I said, the higher you are the pyramid, mm -hmm. that change you will be able to effect. And um, it's working because I can personally I can see how much um, the organization has helped me in my creative journey and uh, how much uh, vision and the uh, purpose I have working with the organization and being a member and like, going to whole training. I can see also the 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 amount of progress my colleagues are making, those that are currently owning businesses, top businesses um, running in Nigeria, and those that are occupying political positions already. So I think in the next 10 years, um, the story will be different. And uh, I'm just happy that there are people willing to work to make the African narrative different. I love that. I love that so much. And I love that your work is bringing so much 
perceivable results right it's not just you know it's not just like oh yes we are bringing results you have the proof of that and i love that and i would genuinely encourage any listeners to actually reach out to uba and see what else can you do to help develop the people and ensure that people are getting the skills they need to get at their highest leadership potential and um, I- i'm just so excited with the work that you guys are doing it's such an honor to have you here uba seriously uh, <laughs> i want to know this next now going back to your creative journey i wanted to know what were some of the problems that you faced like you mentioned earlier imposter syndrome uh, worrying if you know the content you're creating is actually resonating with people or not what were some of the obstacles like this that you faced in your journey and how did you overcome it okay so <clears throat> i think the first obstacle for me was knowing what i really want to do so i had this very long confused states where i just did not know for sure what i wanted to do so i just kept trying this trying that um i was giving up and all that okay no, i try to not just relax <laughs> but it was just not in me actually so I, i just kept trying so um i for me the way i was able to solve that problem of knowing figuring out what i wanted to do was just to keep trying things so i still tell people like if you don't know what you want to do just keep trying you will just fall on that one that one thing that you've been looking for you just land it so so as what i was doing at the beginning of my journey i just kept trying 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 a lot of things finally i was able to strike that thing i wanted to do i was able to find the balance and then i followed that path so I, once i found that then i was able to do i just held on to it and i did not let it go i just kept moving gradual steps one after the other till i'm still moving i'm still moving so that's it uh, another challenge that i faced was also finding time to create content my own content and not necessarily content for brands okay so i because you're always working with this brand you're always working with these people you're always trying to help other companies other brands to, to get this online so you may not find time to to create the kind of content that you want to create for your own personal goods so like i said it was not a matter of having proof of my work proof of my work were, they were everywhere <laughs> like i could literally my portfolio was full literally because like i said i was already working with like top brands and i had a very solid portfolio even though i just entered the industry so proof of my work at every point so something about just sharing that just wanted to do i just wanted to share at the point in that part of my journey so but the time was not there i started instagram for how i did the time to design that character was just a big work for me and it it really made me inconsistent and you know when you start becoming inconsistent you now start having this imposter syndrome and you're like oh you haven't done this you said you're going to do this you didn't do it you, you just make a statement you don't follow through and um I, i was a bit scared that okay i i am an inconsistent person i used to say that to myself like why are you so inconsistent i said we're going to do this but the point is that i'm not inconsistent i have just not found that thing i want to be at So when you find that thing you want to stay consistent with, you just know and you just be consistent. It won't come as a burden. It just come as ah, just I just want to share. It won't just be like oh god, I'm not shared. What am I going to do about that? So you just find it easy. It's also what I noticed about like if you're doing something and it's just a burden, it's just stressing you, you just just know that something is wrong. You said that you are not. Doing it right or that's not what you're supposed to be doing so when i wanted to share so there is a plan doing well and finally i found linkedin and it flowed like me like got on that platform and like, okay this is where i want to be it just flowed so one day after the other i was creating creating there was a time to still on the linkedin i had that problem of not of being inconsistent and there was a week i wasn't posting and there was this imposter syndrome i was just afraid to go back there after ghosting for one week but then i just took a deep breath and said to myself okay 
just just go do one post and see how it goes. And mm -hmm. I did one post, and a lot of people were like, "How oh, bad?" So I was like, "Okay." So if you even noticed that I wasn't there, that felt good actually. And so, um, so that was just my problem. Mm -hmm. And I was finding what I want to stay consistent at finding. Mm -hmm what i want to share but i think i figured that out so i just hope that i would stay consistent and knowing that i have people like you um people like china people like Sir Gerard, always encouraging me is um, something i really thank god for thank you so much for that and i love that answer uva i want to then head off to this question which is what are some of your spiritual or self care practices that you have that basically help you in your work life and your personal life yeah thank you very much so i am a christian and um, as a christian i always make sure i put god first in whatever i do so sometimes you just get carried away and you feel like oh super girl like i do this like i took that but the thing is uh, if you don't if you don't call upon him to help you you just keep struggling and it's just one struggle after that one struggle after the other it doesn't end but you're moving but it's just like a drag you're just stressing but i just found that that when I put in first, when I say, okay, I hand this over to you, just take control. I just find it easy. Like, I just find myself gliding through streets and uh, getting to the end. And so, uh, it's one thing I usually, I always like to do, to always pray and commit it into God's hand. Okay, so normally people will say, ah, you have to, you have to, to take away like one hour in the morning to pray. But sometimes, um, trying to be that perfect trying to have a perfect environment to pray it can be hard when you're just <laughs> uh, if you're trying to get that perfect environment I just found that, that sometimes it doesn't work like that and you just keep missing the opportunities to pray so sometimes i just pray in the bus i just pray while i'm just sitting in the office and i don't just always try to make sure that it has to be in the morning before leaving the house so even if i'm just walking on the road i've already carried my bag on my way to and i do not pray while leaving the house i just start praying immediately when i get on the bus i just keep praying and then the night when i go back i pray so i just make sure that i just keep talking to him it mustn't be like at a perfect time because he doesn't have a perfect time where he listens to you so why do we need to condition ourselves to have a perfect time where we talk to him mm -hmm. so um for me to to keep my mental health in check because i did a lot of things so i just developed some and hobby so before i did not know how to swim but i kept telling myself oh, i was going to learn how to swim i'm going to learn how to swim so uh, in January, I actually went out to swim. So during the weekends, I like to swim and go friends and just post work for a bit. I just put work on hold for a bit and just like have fun and like yeah, just take it before I continue on Monday. So that is it. I love that a lot. Um, I want to talk to you next about this. What is what was one of your soul's conquest and what is shaping up to be your current soul's conquest? Okay, for me, I think um, what has helped me so far are like the kind of people I keep around me. So my friends, family, uh, they've been helping me a lot. So, and I don't know, I think maybe it's just the way God has blessed me. I just think I attract the right kind of people and uh, I just meet the right kind of people in my life. And like maybe the mentor that is always encouraging me, the boss that was willing to give me that first chance, and the friends that would always call to check up on me. So, so those people have been helping me. I, I mean, a lot of people send me opportunities every day. I'm like, oh, but I saw this. I saw this job opportunity apply. It's like I have a job. I mean, I just apply. So. <laughs> so I love I, that. Yay. <laughs> Go <yes>. you. <laughs> I actually like it a lot and the way they know that okay 
this is what she wants. She likes opportunities. She likes self development. So I'm going to send that this. I came across this about you fit into this. Apply. So sometimes I just have to tell them, I love that. I will apply now because my schedule is very tight. But I really, really appreciate. It. I truly appreciate those people that look out for me and they always call me to check up on me. And uh, so in in my, I think that was my 300 level, my third year in school. I was going through like depression and I was so overwhelmed and I was feeling like a failure actually because I was handling the project and it wasn't working out well, school was there and uh, so someone just called me, her name is Ijoma, so she just called me and I was like, Oba, how are you? I was like, fine, said, it's been a long time I get from you, I want to see you. So. I went to her room and she just kept encouraging me. I was like, how did you know that I needed this particular encouragement at this time? Because I did not tell anyone that I was feeling overwhelmed and I was really tired and um, depressed. So she just said nothing that she just wanted to talk to me. She just felt like I I wasn't there anymore. She just, her spirit just told her to contact me. And so that's just been my life, basically. People just showing up for me mm. when I did this. So I think that's my quest, my quest. <laughs> I love that a lot. Oh my God, that's so powerful, Uba. Um, my next question for you is this. What is something that has recently impacted your life? So, <laughs> Mr. Ashley, what has impacted my life? is the fact that in the, I think that was um, in December last year. So I was, I was, okay, I'd already gotten this job, but I was still not really balanced, I was still figuring things out. So uh, I met a friend, his name is Uchena, you see him in my comment section, I was encouraging me. And uh, I think he just like gave me that um, that I don't know I don't know how to call it. I think that's encouragement, that's backing that I really needed at that time. And today keeps encouraging me, going out of the way to make sure that I'm moving. I mean, even when it's not even conducive for him, even when he's stopped where he is level. Uba, you said you were going to do this. You've not done it. You said you were going to <laughs> post on it. You didn't post. I didn't see your post. Where are you? So I don't know. I think there's the people, basically. So That's, I think that was how I was able to scale through that half of last year and um, this year too. So that encouragement really helped me to, like I said, I struggled with inconsistency earlier in my career so i really needed that um, partner that side chick to to help me through my goals and uh, for the past how many months i've been setting monthly goals and um, meeting up and it's really been a big flex for someone that struggles with inconsistency so i love that i love that you had that accountability partner to support you in that journey uh of staying consistent and posting consistently and I know for a fact that, you know, your content is something that I resonate with a lot. That's why I reached out to you in the first place. Um, I would like to end this episode with one last question, which would be, what is the one last thing that you'd like to leave my listeners with? Okay, so uh, because I struggled a lot as a content creator when I was starting my journey, I just want to give this advice to young content creators out there soon. Just keep trying. Just take it one day at a time. That's just key. Just do it today. If you do it today, tell yourself, I did it today. I can do it tomorrow. Just take it bit by bit, one step after the other. And you just see yourself. In short, it doesn't even look like you're moving. But I think after a while, you just look back and be like, I wasn't here as of last month. I wasn't this place last year. So instead of focusing on the, the dark side, the consistency so focusing on uh, what you didn't get right i think you should focus more on what you are getting right and um, one last thing if you haven't figured out what you want to do just keep doing this keep doing one thing after the other um, 
there's this thing about inconsistency that I've always said that uh, if you are in, if you feel you are inconsistent, <laughs> the good thing is that if you feel you're inconsistent about the one particular thing, but if you look at it the other way, you've been consistently doing different things. So inconsistency <laughs> can be like a bad thing, mm -hmm. but just take a look at it from the other side of the of the the shape or whatever it is, and just see yourself consistently doing different things and if you keep trying different things consistently i bet you just find that one thing that you want to do i i love that thank you so much uba for the time that you have spent in this space and for sharing your story with us and inspiring everyone here to keep going keep trying and eventually you'll find that thing that will you know that you'll resonate with that you know is going to be your calling I appreciate your um, presence so, so much. Thank you for being here, Ruba. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me on your show. I really appreciate that. <laughs>